Good morning, I am Tracy Spence with your newscast. This newscast is brought to you courtesy of BioLife Entry Systems. Come join the live in. Call them at 800 875 USA Credit Repair of a Key to Beautiful Credit. You may call them at 800 786 Cruising with the Case Handler, a show on personal injury and immigration, weekdays 8 30 a.m. on Saturdays 7 p.m. and 12 noon on Sundays. And the Supreme Power Homes, call them at 800 493 Now for the news in details. The Jamaican government is facing pushback from its decision not to remove a general consumption tax GCT on tablet computers and related devices to make them more affordable for students engaged in online classes. Education Minister Favel Williams has said the wholesale removal of the tax will not be financially feasible. Instead, the focus will be on giving tablets to needy students. John Mafood, Vice President of the Jamaica Manufacturers and Exporters Association, JMEA, who is also the chairman of Whitfield Town Primary School in St. Andrew, argues that the government will not be able to supply all students with tablet computers. The JMEA was one of several private sector organizations which called for the removal of GCT on devices for at least two years. Mr. Mafood said while he understands the revenue loss if GCT on the device is removed, the government solution is not the best. Jamaica's Crime Monitoring and Oversight Committee, CMOC, says the country is on track to achieving two of the four targets agreed by both political parties as part of efforts to reduce the country's crime rate. Lloyd Distant, chairman of CMOC, provided an update on the targets on Thursday morning. He said the strengthening of an internal audit and anti-corruption body within the Jamaica Constabulary Force can be achieved by the end of next month. Mr. Distant said approval of regulations to make the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency MOCA an independent body can take place this year. In the meantime, Mr. Distant said the Crime Monitoring and Oversight Committee will provide quarterly reports on government activities to tackle crime. Meanwhile, one of Jamaica's top financial analysts, Dennis Chung, believes that environmentalists and the government have been going about the debate on mining and quarrying in the Dry Harbor Mountains in St. Anne all wrong. Mr. Chung says whenever these issues arise, they are not properly dealt with, leading to a tit-for-chat in the public domain. The government has pointed to the potential economic benefits, while environmentalists are worried about the deleterious effect on the environment. Mr. Chong says the government and environmentalists need to meet halfway. He is suggesting the selection of an independent auditor to conduct a cost-benefit analysis of the project. The Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, has pledged its support for countries in the Americas, including the Caribbean, to cover the cost of a COVID-19 vaccine. Assistant Director of PAHO, Dr. Jarvis Barbarossa, said delivering vaccines for COVID-19 will be challenging and costly, so it is vital that countries start preparing. PAHO said projections for Latin America and the Caribbean show that vaccinating 20% of the population will cost more than U.S. $2 billion. The organization said it is already working with countries in the Americas to facilitate access to COVID-19 vaccines under the COVAX mechanism. It offers them the option to purchase the vaccines as a block through PAHO's revolving fund. And that is it for the news. This newscast came to you courtesy of BioLife Energy Systems. Come join the live in. Call them at 800 875 USA Credit Repair of a Key to Beautiful Credit. You may call them at 800 786 Cruising with the Case Handler, a show on personal injury and immigration, weekdays 8 30 a.m. on Saturdays 7 p.m. and 12 noon on Sundays. And the Supreme Power Homes. Call them at 800 493 On behalf of the news and production team, I am Tracy Spence to have a good morning.